money, 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 money. Money signs, please. Yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of fish. And there's big ones in there. Like, that's a bass above the white bass. They're just fish that just, there's white bass in them. You can throw a worm out there and catch. I mean, you catch a, there's a lot of bass that live with white bass. It's hard to graph them, but there's specific groups of fish that are definitely, like, those are more bass right there. I would just be shocked if we can't, like, destroy them. Like, I mean, there's, gosh, I, I just, I'd be very shocked if we could not catch them. A bash right there. There he is. There we go. Got him. There we go. That's what I'm talking about right there. Those fish have been pressured. That's for dang sure. A little DC-20 action. Sorry, buddy. Chunky little fish. Sometimes going natural in color is really the key. That green gizzard color, those fish that are very pressured, you know, you see a lot, let me put this fish back real quick here, hold up. Let me let this guy go, there you go. You see a lot of times when you're fishing on pressured schools of fish, when you have that super loud, obnoxious crankbaits, bigger profiles, you can spook the whole school very easily if you're not careful. So starting with something that's a little bit more subtle, something like a balsa wood crank, but this very small, tight wobbling balsa DT20 can really seem to get those fish to trigger and not spook the school as easy as some other prank baits out there on the market will. Now the other thing is, as they get more pressure, they don't tend to bite the loud, obnoxious ones. They don't tend to bite the ones that are the big, wide, wobbling ones. Those are great in the, in the, in the early spring or the early time when those fish get, first get out there when they'll bite a baby shoe. But as they, get, as they get pressured, you have to switch it up. So that is something that's very important when you're dealing with pressured fish. The big reason for throwing a crankbait in there, if I can on the first cast, especially if it's the right depth and I can get my crankbait to them, really comes down to triggering the school and also i feel like i can get the biggest fish to bite that's something that's so important when those fish are in there and they've been pressured those fish get a little bit accustomed to seeing everything going by them I mean, you see finesse tactics you see everything else and sometimes burning a crankbait something that's very subtle is the way of triggering the biggest fish in the school to bite you see i'm cranking this reel fairly fast trying to get the, that crankbait through there as fast as i can and that's just triggering those fish. When it comes by, they got one or two options, to bite it or get out of the way. The other thing is about crankbait fishing is you can make so many casts on a spot and so many different angles and be more efficient. You know, for instance, if someone's sitting here and casting a worm on this exact spot, I can find the school of fish to find that perfect cast way quicker with a crankbait than I can with any other lure. It's the fastest, most efficient way of getting that bait down there to them, cranking through the school. And if they're gonna bite, you're gonna know it. But also, once you get them fired up, you have that cast. You pay attention to your lineup. You pay attention to where you're casting at. And now, as you break the school up, you can transition to other baits and go to finesse applications, go to your swim baits and everything else. All right, I think we've broke this school up. And just for, for some of the anglers that have not had the chance of, of fishing schools of fish, these fish were set up pretty pretty good. They were set up together. You know, eight, 10, 12 fish. They were set up there. I caught a few of them, and now those fish are scattered out. I broke up the school. Now, rather than sitting here, we could sit here with a, a you know a finesse application, pick up that finesse Nico Tokyo rig, and catch a few more. But I've located a few more schools, and with this current running later in this afternoon, I should be able to pick this crankbait, stay with this program, and go to the next school and catch a few more. So, let's get up out of here and see if we can't uh, go catch a couple big ones. big one there we go oh sorry buddy that is a two minute fish landing violation 
He had it choked though. All right. These fish are a little bit deeper. A lot of times that cast is super important in getting that crankbait down there. If that bait's not hitting the bottom, it's very difficult to get this fish to react and bite. So whenever you get close to that 20 foot mark with a DT20, the key is definitely making those long casts. 7-Eleven, cranking rod, 10, 12 pound line. There's one. There we go. Changing casting angles was that that fish right there. That's what it's about. Sometimes you gotta go from up current, down current, beside of them. A lot of times that is what it takes to trigger those fish. Just because I'm throwing a DT20 does not mean that it's you know exclusive to throwing it in 18 to 20 foot of water. You know, a lot of these schools are set up actually a little bit shallower. Some of them be in 10 and then go down to 20 or 22. Now, when I get that school fired up, what I'll do is I'll try to catch them off that one single cast. And then after I scatter them out, I'll see them start following me into the boat. Oh, that might be a good one. And then I'll change my angle like I did just right there. That might be a big one. Go, oh, he come off. Big. When that happens, pick it up, fire right back in there. We just got them fired up. Don't waste any time sitting there thinking about, oh, I lost that fish, that was a good one. It was probably a four or five plus pounder. You gotta get right back in there to those fish. They're looking for that. They seen their buddy go and eat something. Now they're looking for any little active bait fish, any shad to come through. You wanna make that exact cast. Get right to them. That's a big one. There we go. Another one right there. Changing angles is what it's all about. You can see that bait has been chewed up. I don't even know if the dang camera could get that, but you can see there's teeth marks, literally. I'll tell you what, when I see those dark marks though, dark markings, that always has told me, I don't know if that's exactly what that is, but it's always told me, whenever I see those darker markings on those bass, those black markings, it normally means those fish are pretty or at least the fishery is very healthy. A lot of the bass from this place, a lot of fish. Let's see if we can't catch another one. The water is actually probably a foot of visibility, which is not that clean, but there's something about that subtle hue that I just, I've seen it day in and day out, tricks those bass more than anything. Little foil, balsa wood, they just bite it. 